hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the monthly live stream and happy first day of August. Am I the only one that feels that it's very satisfying that the first day of the week and the first day of the month is starting on a Sunday? I love it. Am I live? Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Can you hear this tapping? Should I do an ASMR channel? Tap, tap. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll stick with two channels. How many of you he here knew that I have two YouTube channels? Raise your hand. Type in the chat if you knew that I have a second YouTube channel. There is a lot of new people here. I was hoping that we would reach this illustrious goal of 100,000 YouTube subscribers by today so we could celebrate it, but we're just gonna celebrate 97,800 of you instead, so. <laughs> Yes, happy first day of August, everyone. Okay, people can hear me. If you are new to the channel, this is something actually I have not published anything on my second YouTube channel in over a year now, hashtag pandemic life, but I am relaunching that channel. So this is a very exciting announcement. Um, if you tuned into last month's live stream, you know that I said that I had an announcement for you. I actually have three announcements, but only one of them is ready for today. The next ones I'll do separate live streams to announce those. But today, if you are interested in learning more about remote work rather than just travel, so more online business and remote work, subscribe to my second channel. It is youtube.com slash digital nomad. So some of you who are here a few years ago when I started traveling with Kristen, then you might know about this other channel, but I haven't talked about it lately because there haven't been any new videos. But um, as you might have noticed here on this channel, I like to mix it up a little bit and not just talk about travel and living abroad and COVID travel updates, of course, as I know many of you here um, found my channel through those travel updates. But um, as you saw in yesterday's video, I like to also talk about remote work. And um, some people here on the travel channel aren't as interested in that. So if you're more interested in making money online, freelancing, working for yourself, starting an online business, that sort of thing, then head on over to youtube.com slash digital nomad and subscribe to my second channel because we're gonna have some new um, videos over there that are less travel related, more online business related, and then we'll do more um, travel on this side. So, oh yes, can turn it up. How about now? I'll give you guys the link youtube.com slash digital nomad. My second channel. Can you hear me now better? Is this better? Also, my air conditioning is on, so it's a little bit loud. But I turned the gain up on my um, microphone, so hopefully that works. I have the right settings, yes. Thank you for the birthday wishes, everybody. So the reason that we um, have the, the live stream is on August 1st instead of the last Sunday in July is because it was my birthday last week. So it was last Thursday on July 22nd and I took the weekend off. <laughs> so I was traveling, I, I did a beach day here in Miami, it was very lovely. I just basically laid on the beach all day, read a book, drank some rosé, and then in the afternoon my friends came over. Um, some of my friends, not everybody's here in Miami of course, and um, we just hung out and chatted and, and then went um, into this like pool area. There's all of these giant hotels on Miami Beach. Has anyone been to Miami? And so we started at the beach and then we migrated into the pool where they were having happy hour and it was actually a really, really good Greek restaurant called Santorini. And the food was very authentic. I had probably, I would say, one of the best Greek salads I've ever had. 
no offense to Greece, because the Greek salads in Greece are like on another level. I don't know what it is, but well, you know from my USA video that I'm not that impressed with the quality of the ingredients in the United States, but um, this salad, it was literally, <laughs> it was a platter of salad. It was like enough to feed an entire family and it just had like very fresh uh, goat cheese or feta cheese and probably three cucumbers sliced up and like 10 tomatoes. It was enormous. It was very good. So I had a great birthday and then um, I flew to Atlanta for the weekend to spend time with my best friend from high school, one of my best friends. And um, the last time we traveled together was for my birthday in 2017 where we flew to Italy and we spent my birthday in Positano on the Amalfi Coast, which was like, I'm pinching myself still about that trip. It was so amazing. Have you ever been to Italy or have you ever been to the Amalfi Coast or Positano or um, anywhere in that vicinity, N Naples perhaps? Comment in the chat. Uh, and also, what do you think about that area? So one of the things that, like the Amalfi Coast is one of those places that is so picturesque and so stunning that it can almost be a little bit, I don't wanna say overrated, but it gets really crowded and it's also quite expensive. But all of that aside, it's just stunningly beautiful. Um, I actually have a playlist of videos, if you wanna see, that was the first time that I ever filmed my travels was on my birthday in Italy in 2017. So I will, um, I will link to that playlist for you guys because it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's funny to look back now. It feels like just yesterday, but it was definitely a long time ago. Um, wait, let's see here. I have a lot of playlists, as I'm noticing right now. Mm, doo -doo -doo. Oh, yes, Italy travel vlogs. Let's see if this link works. So it's one, two, three, four, four, five travel vlogs. And um, I also included a video by good old Lost LeBlanc because he, wrote, he made a video called, Is Positano Worth the Hype? And I instantly clicked on it. Billy Playlist. Um, hopefully this works. This is from my studio side. So that, that should work. But um, it's really funny. And you can see this castle where we had dinner, my birthday dinner, like fireworks. They weren't for me, but they just happened to have fireworks there. Um, we walked the Path of the Gods, which was beautiful. Um, we went to Pompeii, which is something that has been on my bucket list ever since I knew what it was, since I was in history class, probably, in middle school. Um, and we did a vlog about, oh, the Pompeii vlog also includes some of the best food. It's like footage of us making our own homemade, handmade gnocchi at this private vineyard that actually is like a bed and breakfast. I think you can stay there. Um, I think the link to it is in the video description, so you can find it there. Probably the best meal I've ever had. It was um, like a five course lunch and the owners of the, the vineyard made all of the food for us and we made some of it as well. We made our own gnocchi. And so they basically lived on a farm and a vineyard and they made their own wine. They had a wine cellar and it was just amazing. And the, the cool thing about traveling is that you just never know what's going to happen. And so the only reason that we ended up at this vineyard is because our taxi driver who picked us up from my birthday dinner at this amazing castle, um, I believe it was east of the Amalfi Coast, uh, he was friends with the owner of that castle and he was, we got stuck, I forget the road was blocked off. If you've ever been to Amalfi, you know that it's this like tiny little winding road and it's very, um, it gets a lot of traffic jams and it gets backed up a lot. So um, he, we were just talking, we became friends with him. His name is Filippo and we're still Instagram friends. 
And uh, yeah, he brought us to his friend's house, which is on this vineyard, and just we had this amazing private lunch there. And uh, I still think about that. <laughs> it was so, so, so good. So um, yeah, anyway, Italy, good times. And um, I know a lot of you have been waiting for my um, Italy reopening video, but it's been, if anyone's seen the news, things are changing so fast that by the time I filmed, I filmed the Italy reopening, Portugal, Spain, and France, and by the time I published those videos within a couple days of filming them, uh, the information changed like the next day after I published it. And so I held back on the Italy reopening video because I thought that things would change again in July and that I could update it. So, and now like, I don't know, cases are spiking in a lot of places in Europe. So it's still coming, the thumbnail's done, <laughs> but I need to um, update it. So if you are interested in traveling to Italy, in the meantime, you could watch my very silly travel vlogs in the playlist that's in the live chat. And um, I haven't been to Cinque Terre. I would love to go. I think that's a good place to go in, um, in the off season probably because I was th like in, you know, in, it, summer in Italy is very hot, very expensive, um, but I'll definitely go there at some point. So if you're just joining the live chat right now, then welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our monthly, usually, last Sunday of the month live stream, but since last week was my birthday, we're doing it today. Um, so yeah, long story short, I had a good birthday. And um, if you are new to the channel or anybody, just go ahead and comment below where you are, your name, where you are right now, and how you found the channel and any sort of videos that you'd like to see more of, um, topics that you are interested in, um, other content that you'd like to see, countries that you'd like me to cover. And I have an announcement for everyone that if you um, have subscribed to my channel in the past year and a half, you probably wouldn't know that I have a second YouTube channel, which is called youtube.com slash digital nomad. And so if you're interested as much in the remote work and online business aspect, of travel, um, go ahead and subscribe to that channel because I'm going to be relaunching it in, in the next, hopefully in the next month, and uh, lots of how-to videos, tutorials, online business, entrepreneurship, freelancer type of stuff, like how to make money online that is not necessarily, um, doesn't necessarily go with all of the travel topics, but you know, we're living in this time now of travel, location independence, remote work, all overlapping. But if you're more interested in that side, um, join me over there. And what else? Do I have any other announcements? Oh, also, if you're new, um, I also have a weekly podcast called Badass Digital Nomads. So if you're a podcast person, check that out. It's every Tuesday morning. And we are on episode 119 this week. So that's a very exciting milestone. Over 100 podcast episodes, over 125,000 downloads of the podcast, and almost 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So I'm so excited for how much the, uh, the community is growing and also being able to connect with some of you one-on-one -on -one, um, over email and coaching calls. So welcome, welcome. And then we also have a Facebook group with about 5,000 people in it called Badass Digital Nomads. Um, some of my some of my subscribers have said that badass digital nomads is like my alter ego. Like traveling with Kristen is the travel side of my personality, and then badass digital nomads is the badass side. I hope I can say that. I'll have to put that my video has profanity in it. Sorry, YouTube. Anyway, let's get to the welcomes. So, is Tech Lords here? Is our lovely moderator Tech Lords here? Um, I think if you have a, a question, I don't know if Tech Lords is here, but put a Q and a colon and then your question and I will try to answer it live. Um, I think we also have the super chats on and 
Um, I'm going to open the chat so I don't miss any super chats. Mm -hmm. Looks like I already closed out my channel, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to mute myself over there. <clears throat> Ooh, that was a lot of talking. Okay, my computer loads a little bit slowly when I'm live streaming, but it looks like it's still working. Okay, so I will keep this chat open so that I don't miss any super chats and questions. Okay, and I'll try to stay um, current with the chat. One of my struggles. <laughs> okay, so here we have uh, Simon is here. Hayang is here from Finland. Oh yes, it's evening time over there. So we rotate the times so that um, people can join from all over the world. Um, Hayang is planning to go to Estonia. Jeff is here, just got back from Poland and Germany. That sounds fun. Sam is here, Jade's here. Uh, Withold is here. Okay, can you guys hear me better now, hopefully? Phil's here. Hey, Phil. Testing, testing. Phil's one of my new patrons. Welcome, welcome. And we also have a um, live Zoom hangout after this on patreon.com slash traveling with Kristen. So join us for the after party in the VIP over there. Um, FBN is here. He did not know I had a second channel. Very few people know. But now you do. <laughs> Steven's here. Oh, was surfing in Nazare, Portugal. Very cool. I've never surfed there. Um, I used to be a competitive surfer and um, trained in Australia, traveled all over the world for surfing, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico. Uh, Hawaii, Mexico, back in my other life. That was, I wanted that to be my career, but fate had other plans. But I've never surfed in Nazare because I actually don't like cold water and I don't like big waves. So 2019, I was living in Norway, surfing up in the Arctic Circle, and I don't know what I was thinking. It was beautiful, but um, I don't like wearing wetsuits that are so thick that you feel like an Oompa Loompa. Leanne is here, Yonu's here, Ska Punk. What's good? How's the van life treating you? Oh, I hope the volume is better now. Everyone's asking for a volume adjustment. It's better. Okay, good. So I'm in one chat and then I see the other one. Oh, is that Yoji here? Thank you, Yoji. Where's my live chat at broadcast? Thank you, Yoji. <laughs> he says, you look awesome today. Sorry I will be absent at the Zoom party, but I have got an energy. Thank you. Thank you, Yoji is in Japan, I believe. So he is in um, a different time zone. So nighttime over there. Thank you so much for the yen Super chat. I love getting super chats in other currencies. Should put my Bitcoin code on here. <laughs> um, Yoji really liked yesterday's video. Did you guys see my video yesterday on the great resignation? On um, everybody, I think it's more than 4 million Americans so far who have quit their jobs. Probably more than that now. Uh, let's see, Karine is here. Another Kristen with an I, Kristen Williamson. Oh, very close. Kristen Wilson and Kristen Williamson. Okay, great. If you're looking for full-time work, then head over to the um, youtube.com slash digital nomad. Uh, Paul is here. Charles is here. Isaac's here. Hello. Oh, you're in Mexico. Very cool. Um, Travel Eats just subbed to my second channel. So did Randall. Thank you so much. Um, let me know. I have a poll over on the community page over there for like what kind of videos people want to see first. Um, Eric is here, American in Kuwait. Christine is here. She's asking how old I am. You know, I start to feel like the older I get, the more self-conscious I feel about giving my age, but I don't really care. I'm 39. 
um, and I think maybe there's a hint of that because I've been traveling for so many years that people must know that if I've been traveling for 20 years, I must be kind of, kind of old. But age is just a number and it's all relative. I just watched a video about um, the oldest female DJ in the world and she's 83 and she just started DJing I think when she was 81 or 82. She must be 85 now because this was a little bit of an older video but um, I think that's so inspiring. I love hearing stories of gymnasts that are still in the Olympics at their, in their 40s and um, people who are starting a new career or a new hobby or a new life at any age. I think as long as you're still here on the planet, there's still time to do what you want to do. Thank you, Munib, for the birthday wishes. Thank you, Derek. Um, good idea, Travel Eats. I will, um, when my, I guess I could start doing it now. Um, start sending traffic to my other channel from my main channel. Um, I'll probably do that once the, the first video is relaunched. It used to be mostly interviews with uh, digital nomads, but it's going to be more like tutorials and how-to videos. Ooh, Hungary has a good rosé. I did not know that Hungary had good rosé. Uh, note to self. I'm going to write that down. Also, I would like to say um, thank you to, um, I think it was John, been getting, he sent me a book <laughs> in the mail. People have been giving me a lot of book recommendations, so keep any book recommendations coming. I have filled up two shelves of my bookcase. I have a bookcase since I have an apartment at the moment, so I've been filling it up with stuff, as you do. I, don't know what's going to happen when I go nomadic again. I will need a bigger storage unit this time, I'm guessing. Um, oh, Weltwind. Yes, Bulgarian salads are quite good. I would say they're equally good to the Greek salads. They're slightly different. Thanks, Tommaso. Thank you, Jade. Um, ooh, Naples, Rome, and Capri. How is Capri? Because it was very expensive to go there, and it was all the boats were very crowded, so we never went. <laughs> Thanks, Oscar. I am currently in Florida right now. Thank you, everyone, for the uh, birthday wishes. We've got Walt here, B. Murray, Nature Spirit, Nicholas, Gary. Um, I think I added the uh, the link, but I will add it again. It's um for my second channel. Got two screens going on here. Um, bum, bum. Yes, I think if you have been to Italy and you like Italy, the Amalfi Coast uh, is definitely a must see. And it's not just the Amalfi Coast, but it's also the towns around the Amalfi Coast, um, which can be like up to an hour or so on each side and also inland. Um, it's very peaceful there. It kind of, that area reminds me a bit of the northern coast of Spain, like the Basque coast of Spain. Lots of little towns and villages and very picturesque vistas on the seaside, the Mediterranean. And then um, I'm also hoping to get to Italy since that's where my grandma's family is from and uh, I had a trip to Italy or to Sicily planned before with my mom but then she fell and broke her wrist so we canceled it but it'll it'll happen um, Rich stayed in Ravello that is very very nice that's where we had our amazing lunch was in Ravello thanks Ali Sam just graduated from college. Congrats. That must have been hard during the pandemic. But I would say, you know, living on your terms, it, it can feel far away, but you would be surprised at how fast things can, um, things can change. I think you have an advantage being 
the age you are at this time and with the world in such disarray right now that, um, I, as I said in my video yesterday, disruption is the best time for change. And so, um, and I also told this to one of my coaching clients last week, like when he was getting a lot of job offers but they weren't matching all of his requirements and I was just saying to be very discerning when you accept a job offer because typically you're gonna be stuck in that job for the next few years. I don't wanna use the word stuck, but when you make a decision, you know, that decision then plays out. And so if you're accepting a job that's not on your terms today, then it's going to be very difficult to remain satisfied and content in that job years into the future. And so you almost need to aim higher than what you think you're worth now, or look at your standards, look at your bottom line that you would have in a negotiation, and then increase it by a certain amount, because chances are you're probably underestimating your skills and talents, and what you are earning today is not going to be enough a few years from now um, to keep you, you know, really motivated. And of course, there's potential for bonuses, there's potential for salary increases, but if you aim higher than you are comfortable with, it's like shoot for the moon, land in the stars, shoot for the stars, land on the moon, one of those. It's like that, you know, you set an ambitious goal and even if you don't get there, you'll end up getting much farther ahead than, than you would have otherwise if you doubted yourself or you know, we're more modest with your ask. So that's my advice for that. Hey, Jeanette, glad you like the videos. Leanne is new to the channel from Texas. Welcome, welcome. Oh, right, Jade, you do live in Atlanta. Ah, I was only there for about 36 hours, but I did tell you that on the phone that I wanted to um, meet up next time. We have other people in Texas, Michael, uh, Rob, check the link. I think I posted the um, link to the other channel, youtube.com slash digital nomad. And also, if you know anyone who is interested in travel or who's interested in becoming a digital nomad, uh, feel free to share. Uh, that's what I, I made an ask on Instagram for everyone for my birthday to share my channel or my podcast with one person that you think might like it and that you think it might help. And then you get to personally curate part of the community. Got people coming in from Canada, Johannesburg. I oh, that was like a Spanish pronunciation, Johannesburg. Rob's here. I just finished a book called Hero of the Empire about Winston Churchill's escape for, as a prisoner of war in South Africa. And that is a story that I never knew. Did anyone know that? Um, so this was during the Boer War. war and um, I think it was 1899, December of 1899. And I've been to the Churchill War Rooms in London. So if you've ever been to London or you're planning on going uh, to England now that no quarantine is that what I read the other day I think that England has dropped the quarantine for vaccinated US citizens but one of my favorite museums in London is the Churchill war rooms and I also recommend this book hero of the empire that is a riveting read about Churchill escaping by himself from a prison um, in South Africa craziness I also met a guy, his name was Rion, R-E-O-N, and his last name is S-C-H-U-T-T-E, Rion Shutta. He is a motivational speaker and he escaped, or he was freed somehow from um, a South African prison, I believe in the 90s. Um, and he has some crazy stories. So reading these kinds of things or meeting people that have been through such hardships is always a good reality check. And um, I can't even imagine like 
escaping from a prison camp and then making it 300 miles to the next um, to safety with no food or water. <laughs> Crazy. Um, Intuitive Travels asking how I'm feeling from the vaccine. You know, I don't, I think I do still have some symptoms from the vaccine. I had a sore throat. It was, my throat was all red yesterday, the past two days, um, and, and like swollen glands. So I didn't have any symptoms for over a year. I wasn't sick at all, but I really, that vaccine hit me hard. Um, I was like flat out for at least two or three days. And then it took a few weeks to start feeling normal again. And now like weird things pop up, but it could be a coincidence, you know? Yes, Sam, there's a Zoom party after this. Um, if you go to patreon.com, I'll put the link in there. Um, Zoom party. 1 p.m. Okay. All right, we have people of all ages here. Love it. Okay, Megan's asking if I sh can do a video on Morocco. Um, unfortunately, I have not been to Morocco, but it keeps coming up in my awareness. Morocco is actually one of the first countries that inspired my wanderlust. I was telling this story on my podcast interview. I did an interview on Friday for my podcast, Badass Digital Nomads. It's gonna come out in a couple weeks. And um, my guest was saying that one of his favorite countries in the world was Morocco. And that's also one of the favorite countries of Eric Prince, who I had on the YouTube channel and also on the podcast and um, a lot of other people. So I was saying that that was one of the first countries um, that I was interested in. It was actually Morocco and Egypt in, um, in Ep Epcot Center. My parents took me to Epcot when I was five or six years old in Orlando, Florida, and those were my favorite uh, countries. I thought that they were just so exotic and um, so intriguing, but I haven't been to either of them. Hey, Lindell. Steven watched the video yesterday. Very interesting. Luis saw it. ET is here. Oh, you have a full moon party in Kofangan. How nice. I just went to dinner with a fellow digital nomad, uh, online entrepreneur, like two weeks ago, and he spent the last 16 months living in Kofangan. So. He said it was amazing. Living in the bubble. Thank you, Tamara. <laughs> Jennifer, I did not know this about Hungarian wine. You know, I learned a lot about Bulgarian wine when I was there and rose water and rose oil. Um, but I think that that r entire region has some of the oldest vineyards. Yonu is asking how to handle the pressure of being a freelancer. He's hesitating right now. You know, it's a different kind of pressure than working at a job where some of my friends have been telling me lately that they spend about 10 hours a day in Zoom calls and meetings and email, basically hanging out in the Zoom room and in their inbox for 10 hours a day at US corporations. And so if you were to invest that kind of time in building your freelancing business, I don't think you'd have to worry about money. I mean, ideally with freelancing, you should only have to work, you should be able to work less hours a day because you don't have those distractions. Although you do have other responsibilities, you have administrative responsibilities, um, you've got like paperwork, you have accounting, you know, you have a lot of different things, but there are tools now, there's freelancing tools that make it a lot easier. There's online banks like Oxygen that, that
that allow you to separate your business expenses and your personal expenses. So I think being a freelancer has never been easier. And I've seen a lot of headlines with um, people making like seven figures on freelancing sites. And I think the, the number one um, metric for succeeding as a freelancer, it's a factor of basically sales. Like how often are you putting yourself out there how many times a day are you looking for new clients? And you just need to hustle at first. You know, no one's gonna know that you're freelancing unless you tell them. So if you are, aren't afraid of getting like 20 no's and then one yes, you might only need one client per month depending on what you're selling to be able to make a livable wage. So the, I think your success as a freelancer is probably correlated with your uh, resilience and your work ethic. Um, but once you have you know, recurring clients, it gets a bit easier. And then you can expand your business in other ways. Thank you, Marion. Oh yes, I missed the Formula One race, Sam. Darn it. I don't have TV, so I, I don't even know how to watch it. I just watched the highlights, <laughs> the replay. Has anyone been watching the Olympics, by the way? Another um, fun fact is I used to be a competitive gymnast until I was 16, which is basically when gymnasts retire, right? You either go to the Olympics or you retire at 16. So that is when I switched from um, around 14 years old, I switched from gymnastics to cheerleading and surfing. And so eventually I just, my coach basically made me choose between gymnastics and cheerleading. And you know, if you know me, you know I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. <laughs> I, I don't do well with just one thing. Like I can't just have a YouTube channel. I must also write blogs and podcasts. Like I, I just do multiple things all the time. I don't know if that's, good or bad. Jennifer's asking about my books. Um, I have a podcast on, if you go to badassdigitalnomads.com and just search in the search bar books, there's an episode on, I think, 30 books that I read. It's like two years ago, so that is a good book list. I also have um, a list of books in my Amazon store. I will link to that for you guys. Um, but some of the new books that I'm reading right now, um, I'm reading a lot of history books. Um, I have one, like Empire, I'm looking at my list, Empire of the Summer Moon, uh, Hero of the Empire, um, River of Doubt. So there's this trilogy, well, kind of a trilogy, by Candace Millard, and she wrote one book about Theodore Roosevelt going down the, or up, I should say, the Amazon River and mapping a thousand miles of the Amazon River, riveting story. Then we have Hero of the Empire about Churchill escaping from a prison camp. And then also Destiny of the Republic, which is about um, the assassination and death of President Garfield, which I learned so much with that. Um, I also bought a few books Oh, I have one called The Hidden Life of Trees because I've been getting into gardening and I'm just very interested with the plant DNA. That's a thing that I, that I like to study. Oh, I just got, oh yeah, Empire of the Summer Moon is about Native Americans. Um, I got Cal Newport's new book, Digital Minimalism and A World Without Email, <laughs> Wishful Thinking. And uh, what else do I have over there? I actually just got some of, um, I'm really a big fan of Ryan Holiday. Here is the book list on Amazon where you can check out what I've read. But I, I really like uh, Ryan Holiday and the Daily Stoic. And so there were a few books of his that I had not read before. Like I never read Conspiracy and I never read Trust Me I'm Lying. Um, so I have those on the list, and um, yeah, that's basically it right now. There's a lot. <laughs> oh, it's John the book guy. <laughs> Welcome, John. Okay, Jade says Capri is very nice. Oh, 
Yeah, I'll have to get over there. Leanne's asking um, if I have info on digital nomads traveling over 60 years old, is it harder? Um, no, I don't think it would be harder. I think it would be the same. And, you know, it, there's ch different challenges no matter what age you are. So I think if you are 60 or older, you'd probably, you know, you just have more life experience. And so you'd have a, a different experience. You might be more financially stable than a digital nomad who's 20, for example. Um, and it might be easier than if you were traveling at like 30 to 40 and you had little kids with you. So it's all about mindset and also knowing what you want, you know. It doesn't have to be like being a digital nomad forever. It could be just temporary. Scott Punk agrees. He says, you're never too old to travel as much as you want. It looks like I'm really behind on the messages. Hey there, Jeff. Jeff hiked the Camino de Santiago in 2019. I hiked it in 2017. Not the whole thing, but... Congrats on the job, Sam. Uh, Luis is asking, what did I like about Japan? We'll highlight this one because Olympics, Japan. I kind of feel bad for Japan investing all that money in building things that people can't go to see, but maybe they can reuse it for something else. It's like a wedding dress, right? You know, you invest a lot of money in a wedding dress and then you think, I can reuse it <laughs> or something. Or, or that's the bridesmaid dresses, right? But you never do. Um, Japan, I have a huge playlist on Japan. Let me link to that for you guys. I'm very proud of my Japan playlist. I like it. Uh, Japan, Japan. I have 15 videos on my Japan playlist. So I will link to that for you guys. Are there any other countries that you want me to cover? I know I haven't been traveling this year, but there's still a lot of countries that, um, that I've been to that I can make videos about. playlist. Oh, and we have a super chat from CLP. Thank you so much. Let me find it here. Multitasking. Oh, we had a super chat from Eric. Hold on, I'm behind. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat. He says, as an American going to Iceland, I see they started back with a 72 hour test rule before entry. Um, yes, they do have that. Also going to Budapest and Paris, what are the chances I have to test to get into each country? Um, Paris, I believe, I, I think with both of those countries, or with France and Hungary, you need to test. I haven't checked in the last week or so because I was taking a um, media fast for my birthday. I was just taking a news fast break. I actually did, even last night, I just did a 40 hour water fast and phone fast. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've been on a media diet. So I unfortunately can't answer your question with any certainty. I apologize for that. But um, I'll have to look it up just to make sure because things change every week. And you know, I'm behind on my Google alerts, people. And we have, is this, where is, what is the CLP? Oh, pesos, Chilean pesos is next. We'll get to, um, where's the next one? We have a also super chat from Carlos in Chile. Thank you so much, Carlos. Carlos is thinking of becoming a digital nomad by next summer. Headed over to Eastern Europe to work remotely. Already sorted it out, keeping his work, keeping his job in Chile. 
and he plans to visit Chile sometime soon. Uh, well, congratulations on being able to go location independent. Eastern Europe is a very uh, lovely place to base yourself. And of course, I have a video about that. <laughs> Let me find it for you. Um, Got to get into my studio here. I've actually never been to Chile. I've been to Argentina, but um, I've been to Peru, but I have not been to Chile. So one of my best friends from Costa Rica, she's half Chilean, and um, she always says very good things about it. Um, but you guys know that I love Eastern Europe. Let's see. I think I have a video. It's on like, it's like Eastern Europe off the beaten path. Destinations for digital nomads. So I'll link to that for you guys. My computer is being very slow. Yeah, here we go. Best places to live in Eastern Europe. It's only two and a half minutes long. It's really short. Look here. I wish I started uh, filming my travels sooner, then I would have more videos, but that'll work for now. Okay. We have some requests for me to try van life. It's on my list. I was actually thinking of doing a van life in Scotland in 2020, but those plans got scrapped. Um, oh good, Travel Eats quit their job during the, the great resignation. Hi Major Collie, hi Jennifer. Yes, Jade, see you in another country, perhaps. Um, we have a request for a video about nomad jobs at 56 years old. What do you guys think about that? That could be a topic for youtube.com slash digital nomad, digital nomad jobs in your 50s and 60s. I could do a video about that. Um, Walt, I got the um, Moderna vaccine. Ah, Major Collie had the same symptoms. Interesting. I actually went back to the pharmacy and I asked them. I was like, is this normal? Because I couldn't find anything about having symptoms for a month after the vaccine. And they said no. Well, actually, they said it's not clinically proven to have uh, side effects for so long, but that they were getting anecdotal reports in the pharmacy about that. So it is what it is. Thanks, Ska Punk. <laughs> uh, Matt's asking if I caught the premiere of surfing in the Olympics. Um, I, I didn't catch like the first heats live, but I did see um, the women's semifinal and part of the final, but I fell asleep. So that was very exciting. I actually surfed against the gold medalist, Carissa Moore, in 2004, and she beat me. <laughs> She's much younger than me, but um, I think she won nationals that year. She won the, I believe it was the open women's. She probably won both. We had Explorer and Open, and then I won the college division that year, but she's definitely deserves deserves it. I mean, she's world champion multiple times, and she really didn't give up, and she almost lost the semi because there were very few waves coming through. That's one of the hard things about surfing is you only get like 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes to catch a few waves. So if no waves come in, then you can lose, not because you're not good at surfing, but because you couldn't show what you could do. Um, for the Olympics, what I did is because I have, um, this is a question about how to watch the Olympics. When, um, 
with my internet comes some like free, it's like this device for TV on demand. And even though I don't have a TV to connect it to, I still get like the free, I guess, NBC Peacock is included. So I set up an account there and you can watch the replays with no commercials. So that is quite nice. Also YouTube. I've been Googling anything, any sport I want to see. I just Google it or I YouTube it and search for it. Um, where am I off to next? I don't know. Uh, next, oh, my brother's coming to visit and my niece next week. So I'll be hanging out with them. And then um, I am going to Los Angeles to speak at Vid Summit, which is a YouTube conference in LA. So that will be fun. And then my cousin's pregnant in Austin, Texas. So I'll probably go to Austin. And then after that, that will be probably October. And then I'm thinking for November and December to in January and February, probably for three or four months to go back to Europe and travel around. Um, maybe go by October, we'll see. But yeah, I think I'm probably going to spend the end of the year in Europe and the beginning of 2022. I would love to go back to the mountains and go snowboarding. And I just miss Europe, you guys. I've been living there for so long and I miss it. Mm, well, it's asking where to find companions for international travel. Hmm. I'm a big solo travel fan. If, you're, if your friends can't travel with you, I think in Facebook groups, um, even if you can't travel with people, you can at least meet people in those destinations. And then there's also, there's an app called Fairy Trail that um, a guy who was on my podcast started it. And it's basically a friends app and a dating app for travelers. So I think I can find the, um, let's see, I'll find the link for you. I probably need um, an assistant for my live stream to find links. Okay, so this is the link for fairy trail podcast so you can learn all about it i don't know if taiga is here but i'll tell him i mentioned him fairy tale or trail app to meet travelers boom okay okay i also added here for people interested in what books i'm reading this is my amazon store if you just search Amazon Traveling with Kristen, you can find a lot of travel products that I use, all of my podcasting equipment, my video production equipment, books that I've read, uh, office stuff, health and wellness stuff. It's a bit of a mix. Oh, love that. Single woman on the loose. International house sitter at 71 years old. Age is just a number. Yep. What are you house sitting for some animals? Um, I have not been to Taiwan yet, but I have a very cool podcast coming up with uh, an expat uh, family that has their own reality show about living in Taiwan as foreigners. So that is super exciting. Make sure to subscribe to Badass Digital Nomads so that you can um, listen to that when it comes out. Uh, Travel to Money is asking, do I ski or snowboard? Yes, I snowboard. I haven't been to Andorra, but um, I was skiing in the French Alps in 2019 and then 2020 uh, didn't happen. And Movie Shots asking, hi, Netherlands, one of my favorite places. How long have I been a digital nomad? It's hard to say exactly because I have to add up 
you know, all of the years that I was technically a digital nomad or not, there's no exact definition for it. Um, I've been location independent since 2011, but I've been living in foreign countries off and on pretty much full time since college, since 2002. I studied abroad in Australia and Costa Rica, and then I moved back abroad in 2005. And then I've spent like the past year and a half here in the US, still location independent, still working remotely, just planted myself here in Miami for a little while, so that's been nice. And I've also spent some time in the US on the west coast of Florida and in North Carolina. Um, but other than that, I've basically been in different countries since I was 20 really since my teenage years, because I used to travel for surfing. Ooh, I like this question. You guys know I'm such a foodie. Lindell is asking, what is one of my favorite foods from my travels? Hmm. Well, I was talking at the beginning of this live stream about um, my amazing meals um, in Ravello near the Amalfi Coast of Italy. So I don't know if I could pick like one food, but I'm, I am Italian, so I'm definitely partial to Italian food. I like simple food. I think there's nothing better than like a Greek salad, like I was saying at the beginning, or just like an arugula salad with fresh Parmesan cheese and uh, olive oil in Italy. Um, I like stuff like that. I do love French food as well. And I love, I mean, I love all food, right? Like. Japan had amazing food. Um, Thailand has amazing food. But I don't think I could eat noodles every day. Like uh, I was in Vegas a few weeks ago and ended up, um, it was, I think it was in the end of June, it was when they had just reopened fully. And so there were just lines into every restaurant and my friend and I couldn't find a place to eat. So we ended up eating um, dumplings, <laughs> Taiwanese dumplings at like 9 a.m. And it was packed with people eating Asian, you know, eating dumplings at 9 a.m. But I couldn't do that every day. So I'm more into like a kind of like European style food. So Axel, these types of questions, um, I'm going to be covering those on my second channel on youtube.com slash digital nomad. So if you're interested in this type of advice, like how to start a digital nomad career, how to find a remote job, how to make money online, that sort of thing, then go over and subscribe to youtube.com slash digital nomad. And Major Kali says, don't forget to smash the like button, folks. I would say to lightly tap it. <laughs> Don't smash anything, but you can if you want. Yes, agree, Ska Punk. Press that like button. Give it a little tap, click, whatever you do. And live life on your terms. Thank you, everybody. Oh, such nice comments here. Thanks, Papu. Thanks, Fernando. He says, you are a great motivation. <laughs> a lot of people here that don't have TV. Yep, Olympics on Peacock has been uh, where it's at. Agree, Eric. Solo travel is awesome. Ooh, Tamara is inviting me to a taco party. I love it. In Lisbon, oh, that sounds good. I can't wait to have house parties again. Oh, we have still lots more questions, but um, I'm gonna need to go over to, um, to Patreon for our after party that started three minutes ago. Yes, Tamara, I agree. To, I was still wearing a mask at the airport. Hi, HAB. Hi, Enrique. He says, saludos. Your videos are interesting and educative. Thank you. Thanks, Tamara. Smash that like button, guys. So thank you so much for joining me on my birthday. 97,800 subscriber live stream celebration chat. <laughs> um, if you're watching the replay, hello, hello. And 
Um, what's next? Uh, subscribe to youtube.com slash, slash digital nomad if you are into remote work stuff. Stay tuned for two more special announcements that will be coming in separate live streams. Come on over to patreon.com slash traveling with Kristen if you want to hang out for another hour. And I hope that you all have a very amazing first day of August. It has been such a pleasure hanging out with a few hundred of you here today, definitely making my day. And thank you so much for all of the birthday wishes. Happy birthday to anyone else if your birthday is soon. And um, everyone stay safe. Stay safe, stay tuned for lots more videos coming your way. Sorry I took a week off, but um, yeah. Share the channel if, with any of your other travel friends. Share the podcast with your podcast friends. And we'll see you in four weeks on the next live stream, the last Sunday of August. So we basically get two live streams this month. So very nice to chat with everyone. Nice to meet all of the new people. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chats as well. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. I know, I'm getting hungry too. I just did a 40 hour water fast. I did eat breakfast, but um, I'm ready for lunch now. All that talking about good food. And scroll through the chat guys if you wanna watch my Japan playlist, my Italy playlist. And I'm just excited for more travel coming up. Bye everyone.